So today I'm going to use corduroy to show you how to use a flannel board when you're reading, also how to read with fluency and expression. The objective of my read aloud will be for my students to practice telling, retelling a story orally. So my learning objective written out says the learner will practice retelling a story after hearing it read aloud. <coughs> I have a couple of flannel board characters that I'm going to be using and a couple of the things that you will see in the story. I'm not going to introduce all of them to my students in detail, but this one I probably will because it's a little bit hard to tell what it is. Um, the students, the important thing for you to know is that even during a read aloud, I think that your students must know what the point of you reading aloud to them is. So I will make sure that they know this learning objective before I even start reading the book. I'm also going to read this book as though I have a group of students in front of me and as though they are participating. So bear with me on that. So today I'm going to read you Corduroy. The goal of reading Corduroy today is going to be for you to practice listening to the story so that after the story is over, you can practice retelling it out loud to your neighbor. There are a couple of characters in the story that we are going to run into, and there are a couple of things we're going to see. So I have this flannel board and these little character pieces, and whenever we come across one of them for the first time in the story, I want you to raise your hand and tell me to put it up on the flannel board. And after we're finished reading the book, we'll have everything in order, and that will help us remember what happened in the story so that we can better tell it to our neighbor. So yes, yes, on the front cover, that is Corduroy, very observant of you. I want to introduce all of these flannel board pieces to you. This is a little girl, an adult, maybe the little girl's mom. This is an escalator. So this one is a little bit confusing because you can't really tell what it is. It looks like it might be buildings or something else, but it's called an escalator. How many of you have ever been on a set of stairs that moves? Okay, that isn't, yes, when you're at shopping with your dad. Okay, very good. Yes, that is called an escalator. So if you're on a set of stairs and it's taking you up or down and moving without you having to take steps, that's called an escalator. A night watchman or a cop, a lamp, and some beds. So we're going to use these pieces to help us remember what the story was about so that we can retell it to our partner after the story is over. And so we have to pay attention while I'm reading so that we can help each other remember when we need to put one of these characters or things up on our flannel board. Let's begin. Corduroy by Don Freeman. Corduroy is a bear who once lived in the toy department store, in the toy department of a big store. Day after day, he waited with all the other animals and dolls for someone to come along and take him home. Very good, you guys are paying attention. Yes, Corduroy has been introduced. So I'll put him on our flannel board to help us remember. <clears throat> the store was always filled with shoppers buying all sorts of things, but no one ever seemed to want a small bear in green overalls. And then one morning, a little girl stopped and looked straight into Corduroy's bright eyes. Oh, Mommy, she exclaimed. Look, that's the very bear I've always wanted. Not today, dear, her mother sighed. Not today, dear, her mother sighed. I've spent too much already, and besides, he doesn't look new. He's lost the button to one of his shoulder straps. Corduroy watched them sadly as they walked away. I didn't know I'd lost a button, he said to himself. Tonight, I'll go and see if I can find it. Very good, you guys. Yes, we had some more characters introduced. So the little girl who wants corduroy for her own and her mother. 
Late that evening, when all the shoppers had gone and the doors were shut and locked, Corduroy climbed carefully down from his shelf and began searching everywhere on the floor for his lost button. Very good. Yes. So do you guys remember what this is called? An escalator. Very good. So I'll put that next so we can remember that we next saw an escalator in this story. Suddenly, he felt the floor moving under him. Quite by accident, he had stepped onto an escalator and up he went. Could this be a mountain? He wondered. I think I've always wanted to climb a mountain. He stepped off of the escalator as it reached the next floor and there before his eyes was a most amazing sight. Tables and chairs and lamps and sofas and rows and rows of beds. This must be a palace, Corduroy gasped. I guess I've always wanted to live in a palace. Very good. Rows and rows of beds. He wandered around admiring the furniture. This must be a bed, he said. I've always wanted to sleep in a bed. And up he crawled onto a large, thick mattress. All at once, he saw something small and round. Why, here's my button, he cried. And he tried to pick it up, but like all the other buttons on the mattress, it was tied down tight. He yanked and pulled with both paws until pop! Off came the button, and off the mattress corduroy toppled. Bang! Into a tall floor lamp. Over it fell with a crash. Very good. Do you guys want to put the lamp upright or do you want to have it toppled over? Yes, it would probably help you remember better if we put it toppled over what happened here. Okay, very good. <gasps> what do you think's happening on this page? Yes, we have our last character to be introduced here. What do you think's happening? Oh, he probably heard he probably heard that lamp fall over. When Corduroy was pulling his button off of the mattress because or pulling a button off of the mattress because he thought it was the one that went to his overalls. Very good. Okay. Corduroy didn't know it, but there was someone else awake in the store. That night watch the night watchman was going his rounds on the floor above. When he heard the crash he came dashing down the escalator. Now who in the world did that? he exclaimed. Somebody must be hiding in here. He flashed his light under and over sofas and beds until he came to the biggest bed of all, and there he saw two fuzzy brown ears sticking up from under the cover. Hello, he said. How did you get in here? The night watchman tucked Corduroy under his arm and carried him down the escalator and set him on the shelf in the toy department with the other animals and dolls. Corduroy was just waking up when the first customers came into the store in the morning. And there, looking at him with a wide, warm smile, was the same little girl he'd seen only the day before. I'm Lisa, she said, and you're going to be my very own bear. Last night, I counted what I'd saved in my piggy bank, and my mother said that I could bring you home. Shall I put him in a box for you? The sales lady asked. Oh, no, thank you, Lisa answered, and she carried Corduroy home in her arms. She ran all the way up four flights of stairs into her family's apartment and straight to her own room. Corduroy blinked. There was a chair and a chest of drawers, and, a and alongside a girl-sized bed stood a little bed just the right size for him. The room was small, nothing like that enormous palace in the department store. This must be home, he said. I know I've always wanted a home. Lisa sat down with Corduroy on her lap and began to sew a button on his overalls. I like you just the way you are, she said. But you'll be more comfortable with your shoulder strap fastened. You must be a friend, said Corduroy. I've always wanted a friend. Me too, said Lisa, and gave him a big hug. 
Okay, you guys did a great job. We got all of our pieces up here. So now we're going to practice retelling the story to our partner. So the first thing that happened will start on the left side of the storyboard where Corduroy is sitting in the window and the little girl comes along and she sees him and she looks right into his big bright eyes and she wants him. But then what does her mother say? Exactly. So do you see how I'm telling the story aloud? I want you guys to tell the story aloud to your neighbor, the person right next to you, and go in order and try to remember all of the parts of the story from beginning to end. You think you can do that? Okay, very good. So go ahead and turn and talk with your neighbor. And as you're doing that, I'm going to walk around and listen. Okay, so it will go something like that. And the goal of using the flannel board for my read aloud today was to um, have the students pay attention as I'm reading so we can use the pieces on the flannel board to help us remember what the story was about so that at the end, after the story is over, they could practice retelling it orally to their neighbor. You could do this um, with a small group of students where they're retelling it to you. Um, you could do it one-on-one. -on -one. You could also do it as a large group where, you know, if it's in, this is a good lesson for probably pre-K, kinder, or first grade. Of course, they cannot read in pre-K or kinder, so if you wanted to retell the story, um, you would have to you know, as a large group, you and you wanted to add to this flannel, the flannel board pieces, or add anything else, you might want to draw more pictures or something like that, because some of the parts are not represented by these pieces. Um, remember that if it's pre-K or kinder, you're not going to want to write a bunch of words up on the board. Um, you could write maybe one or two just to give them print exposure, but make sure it has a picture accompanying it, and doing it from left to right would be important so that they can, you know, read the story um, after you guys are finished telling it aloud as a large group. But yes, you could do it small group, large group, or have them do it in pairs. The thing about having them do it in pairs is that you would have to have them paired up ahead of time and have already practiced on good manners of, you know, one person goes and then the next and stuff like that. So I hope you enjoyed this and have a good day.